fairy tale story for them, but they've already picked up three medals. And Helena Jonsson will return a heroine after her superb efforts here this year. Now you see the top eight. Russia now 103. They've closed another two seconds, but they're running out of time. We need a superhuman effort on this uh, last 2.5 lap from uh, Maximov. Well, it hasn't taken Landerting along to get back in control. He's uh, gained those four seconds on Hannibal, and he's put another four or five seconds on top. An eight, nine second advantage for Landertinger, and he's still got some way to go. Seven and a half kilometers the distance. Now, Pfeiffer is starting to look a little tired, but he always looks tired. But somehow he digs deeper and deeper every time we see him. And he always holds Germany in the game. Mickey Grice has got a chance to make up for what's been a pretty miserable, miserable championships for him because he will have a crack at winning this one. Deris Emilia of Ukraine will be ready to prounce should uh, the leading three teams make mistakes. But uh, of those outside the medal positions at the moment, I think France have the best chance. And uh, having had a little bit of success on Friday, more success yet on uh, Thursday, of course, Friday was a day off. More success yesterday in the uh, women's relay. They could just do it today. And as Be Besserberg of the IBU looking on. I think uh, he'll be happy with the way things have gone. He's the president of the IBU. Now, is Lander Tinger still pushing hard? He's one of those uh, deceptively quick athletes. He's tall, he's strong, he's got beautiful balance, so he can afford to ski with a slightly slower tempo. When he needs to up it for these steep uphills, then he can. Look how steady the upper body is. Hardly any movement. If you take the legs and arms away, everything else is pretty static. Very efficient skiing indeed. I can't say the same about Hannibal, but Hannibal has his own ways, and no one can say that it hasn't worked for him over the years. The legs get wider and wider apart as he works his way up the hill. But it is Pfeiffer who is coming strong, and Norway, having exited the range in first, could well be pushed down into second. Poor old Ole Einar Bjorndal, and he has got to do it again. I wonder, and I'd be interested to know what you think on this, whether Bjorndal made a mistake entering into the mixed relay, because the routine, the race, the schedule here is so, so tough. Six races in eight days. My goodness, that is tough. That is very, very tough, especially when you're planning on winning everything you enter. And uh, I wonder whether Bjorndal would have been better to sit out the mixed relay very commendable that he was prepared to race it, sacrificing his own interests. Of course, there was another goal to be had, but uh, I don't think there's any doubt that come the end of the mass start, he looked shattered. Suman and Landertinger, who overtook him on that last lap, both sat out the uh, mixed relay. Austria didn't have a team. And uh, many thanks to all of you sending in uh, notes about the mixed relay saying how much you've enjoyed it and hopefully it will stay as uh, a uh, regular in the world championships I think uh, it will certainly I hope we just add a couple of days to the program so Norway go away in second uh, Hannibal just holding off Pfeiffer but the gap is next to nothing two seconds between them Austria have a lead of 11 seconds it is Christoph Suman who leads and I think the Austrians and certainly those watching back in uh, Innsbruck and all the fans and all the biathlon enthusiasts in Hogfels and I think they'll be quietly confident that they can hold on here because Suman's standing shooting has been absolutely immaculate this year and it was such a problem two seasons ago. Signs of improvement last year. This year, he's hardly put a bullet wrong all the way through the season. And so, uh, yep, I think they'll be confident. Whether it will turn out that way, you're going to have to wait uh, another 16 seconds or so to find out. Let's just, uh, we should, uh, in a minute, get uh, some idea of who uh, has been... The quickest on that leg, the Ukrainian 17.04, and France uh, with uh, a very good time, 17.04.5 in second place.
Germany with Pfeiffer, the third fastest, Norway fourth, Landerting a fifth fastest, 25 seconds slower than Ukraine. That has allowed the Ukrainians in with a crack at a medal here in uh, Pyeongchang. So the positions at the third exchange, one leg to go, seven and a half thousand metres to ski to decide the final gold medal of the 2009 championships. Will it be Austria looking for their second gold? Well, it's down to this man, the 33 year old Christoph Suman. And if you want an idea of how good he is, he is currently lying in fifth place in the World Cup standings, just behind Emil Hegler Svensson of Norway. Well, you know all about the man in red, Ole Einar Bjorndaling, dragging the inside stick just to give himself a little bit of stability. And the Germans with Mickey Grice following suit. Frank Ulrich quick to put orders out on the track. Ukraine with Roman Prima. Now, is Prima going to be able to hold on? Uh, certainly, it would be a monumental effort if he did manage to pull them up into uh, a medal position. Prima currently ranked 39th in the World Cup rankings. Uh, he'd had a couple of very good results, a very good individual, in fact, in Hogfilsen early on in the season when he hit 19 targets out of 20 to finish in the top five. So uh, if he can reproduce that sort of form, and uh, one of the leading three teams makes mistakes, then maybe, maybe Ukraine can come through. Suman is pushing it. He started very, very fast. The margin was 11 seconds over Norway and Germany. Mickey Grice and Oleina Bjorndalen, the two big rivals from 2006, the two big rivals for the last four years, or really, uh, I think, since uh, Poiret retired. So let's make that three seasons. 14.4. Suman has taken three seconds out of them. He has earned one missed shot. Could be very significant. Prima, 32 behind. He was 24, so Prima is losing ground to Suman. And then uh, France still in there with um, an excellent run. The French have only missed four targets. Don't tell me that's the Russians going down. It is Russia going down. Maxim Shudov an early faller and then it looks as though the Italians or might have been the uh, Slovakians going down as well I didn't quite pick up on the bib number if it was 11 it was uh, Slovakia going down I think it might have been 12 because it was a dark suit similar to that of the Americans which would mean that uh, Russell Courier or possibly Jeremy Teeler coming into the finish because the Americans are some way behind at the moment uh, if you're a fan of the USA let me just try and update you USA at the last count were down 17th, 18th, 2 minutes 44. Now they haven't been lapped as yet. So one, two and a half kilometer lap taking just over the six minutes. So they are safe. Britain at the last count down in 25th of all the teams and uh, only 26 entered today and they're already 6.45 off the lead. Up the front though, it is still Austria in charge but not safe. Christoph Suman. Seventeen out of twenty hits in the mass start to win the silver medal. He missed two on his first prone on that occasion. Bjorndalen starts and gets back to old habits of missing the first target. A chance then for Germany to move into silver medal position, but Mickey Grice has missed as well. Everything looking good for Austria at the moment, and a second miss from Bjorndalen. Now, the medal positions could change. Surely we're not going to see Norway on the penalty loop again. They've done two already. One with Svensson, one with Lars Berger. Down it goes, but valuable seconds given away. And Christoph Suman is going to find himself 19 seconds clear from one shot advantage. He almost has a two shot advantage now, and that might be enough for Austria to secure the win. They have not won this title ever, ever. So history in the making, perhaps for Austria. Two mistakes from Ukraine have uh, let the French into fourth. 
and uh, still only 20 seconds or so between third and fourth. Simon Forcada looks hungry. I think we could see some drama on the final shoot, especially with Bjorn Dahlen and Grice side by side. Where did the miss go? Oh. Well, there were no misses for Suman. Five out of five. He leads the way. In a little bit of clean snow for Mickey Grice, the triple gold medalist from 2006 Olympic Winter Games. He's being chased, though, by the greatest biathlete of all time. Out front and making a name for himself is Christoph Suman of Austria. A gold yesterday in the men's mass start for Landertinger, a silver medal for Suman. Are they going to wrap it up with more gold to take home to Hockfilsen? This is a major, major step in the development of the Austrian team after their disgrace of the 2006 games. What is the gap between second and third? Mickey Grice has got at least 17 seconds to make up on Suman. He's also got to defend a slim lead over Bjorn Dahlen. It is only six seconds, and the margin when they came out of the range was seven. So Bjorn Dahlen is going the right way, but he's got to push hard, and that means he risks missing targets on the final shoot and uh, I don't know sometimes you feel supremely confident about Bjorn Dahlen but when he gets tired he does tend to miss and having completed five races already I think there is no doubt that he is uh, he is starting to get towards that fatigued state that makes the standing shooting that much harder Grice starts wide cuts fine Bjorn Dahlen usually so precise in picking his line. He would have had a good look at this corner before the race, and he comes out cleanly. Excellent style once again. 120 metres, the difference between first and third. Now the trailing teams are starting to be overtaken. A big, big build-up to the final shoot for Christoph Suman. He would love to secure the gold medal with a clean final shoot. If he does that, no one will catch him. He's still fast enough at 33 to outski the likes of, Su of uh, Bjorn Dahlen and Grice. There's no doubt about that. China now uh, one lap behind. That is... Uh, Haibin Hyeng on the course for them, or Cheng Haibin, I should say. And Haibin stepping up his tempo to match that of Christoph Suman. Well, it looks as though 17 seconds has grown a little bit, or is it just by a fraction? It is just by a fraction, 17.8. Bjorn Dahlen was 23 behind. He's now 22.2. He's going the right way. But after yesterday's evidence, Bjorn Dahlen has got to come out clear. He will not outski Suman on the last leg. And I think that even Mickey Grice will give him a good run for his money. Here is the man hoping to take a medal, hoping that the leading three distract each other, that the leading three force mistakes out of each other's rifles. We'll see if that happens. He's close enough, but only just. 20 seconds has grown to 30. Simon Forcada has got to shoot five out of five to stand any chance. Ukraine is still there. It's been a great effort from the Ukrainian team. Bilenenko.